the first one is mindset. First and foremost, the correct mindset is fundamental, which is even before you say a thing, they pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kid you not. Really, even before you say a thing, because if you don't have the correct mindset to your point, one of the things that I discovered is the card, what I call the cardinal rules of networking. I find them to be even the prime rule. When royalty was royalty, they have two prime rules. One, the first one is be interested. Okay, that's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, always put your personal interest last. These are the fundamental information that allow me to put together a workable networking know-how. So first and foremost, the mindset. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the show. I'm here with another great guest, and you're in such a great treat, especially for those of you who are looking for ways to create more collaborations or specific partnerships in your business or whatever project you got going on. And today we have an expert on creating connections. And as you really want to listen to what he has to say. Uh, so today I have Basile Lemba with me, and we are so excited to, to have you here with the show. Basile, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah, and I'm so glad you're, and I've listened to you speak, you know, uh, we're, we're part of a, a networking group where uh, I do get the opportunity to, to hear you share uh, mm -hmm. little parts of what you do. And I'm, I'm really excited to do a deeper dive uh, mm -hmm. in, into what it is that you do. So I think a great place to start, I don't like to do too much on the introduction because I, I don't know your story, you know your story the best. So let's start with telling everyone you know, who you are and, you know, what you do, and then we'll take you go, take, we'll take it from there. Sure. Thank you very much. Glad to, thank you. I'm happy to be here. I am from, my name is Basil Limba. I'm from Cameroon originally. I left when I was 14 and I went to France, lived there for 10 years, became an architect and worked there for two years. And as I was helping an organization, they invited me to go to the U.S. and work for them, which, you know, I took a on it. I did. And I went there, worked for that nonprofit organization for 10 years and moved up to Northern Virginia where I started my business. So then, of course, I did not know anyone in Northern Virginia, if you can imagine that. And then I started a business, which may not have been a smart idea because if you start a business, you got to know somebody to talk to. But I didn't know anybody. What am I going to do? Say, hey, I want to tell you my business. <laughs> so I had the idea of there got to be something called Chamber of Commerce. So then I, that was 20 years ago. I hit the phone book, found one join. So I attended some of the event, but I was not very happy. And one day I was invited to an event with 450 people with luncheon. I got very excited. I was thinking, I'm going to get 30 to 40 contacts. So I say, how much? This is 150. I'm like, 150? Most of the event that I was attending was free. I mean, never had to pay, then it would be $10, but 150, one event. So I did go. The sad part is at the end, I wound up only with three business cards because there was no way to network. So that was my first realization with networking. So then I surveyed business people and found what they needed. And I started a breakfast event, which did very well. And then as part of that, I was putting people together so can they can talk to one another. And then one day I realized one person did not know what to say. Then I said, oh my God, they don't know how to network. And then I started putting together networking know-how. So now we're sharing it with other people so it can help them. Mm. And that's, I think, a really powerful thing because I know that in all of the various networking that I've done in my career and various events that I've attended is that not, a, not everyone knows what to say. Not everyone knows how to connect. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so it happens so often at networking events that everyone is there for their own reasons. And usually it's, I want to get contacts. I want to be able to promote my thing. But, but really it, what you're saying is that you want to create connections. You want to create contacts. And I, that's what I love so much about uh, what you do. Um, and so I know you, um, you have a story about how you kind of created your own, your, your own group and how this kind of uh, grew from there. So, mm -hmm. you know, tell, tell everyone about, you know, how you got started with, with uh, these, uh, you know, with teaching people how to network properly. 
Yeah, after I realized that uh, there was sitting literally, I had them facing one another, and one person talked to another one and said, "Hey, what do do? So they said, oh, I'm in renovation. I do bath, kitchen, and bath." And then the turn of the other person came to speak, and all they said, "Oh, I did my kitchen three months ago, and see nothing else for the remaining time of fifty-seven seconds." That's where the light bulb went. And I said, "My God." Then I started putting together. And then again, I'm talking about Africa, France, and United States. I drew from everything I learned along the way and everything that I was being presented with because I've been doing this for now 18 years and start putting together workable know-how. In fact, it reached a point where one day, we're talking about people having challenges networking. We did a survey. Who we asked business people, do you drive a car? They say, yes. How do you learn how to drive? I said, well, I went to driving school, number one. Number two, somebody taught me. Number three, all of the above. Very good. Next question, do you network or attempt to network? Of course, yes, of course. What kind of question is that? <laughs> All right. <laughs> how do you learn how to network? The answer was, uh, 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 number one, I just walked into the room. Number two, somebody pushed me into the room. That was the totality of their training. So we say, we wouldn't take the car keys and hand them to a 16 years old and say, go ahead and drive. But that is the deal most people get when it comes to networking. In fact, I found one day, because I said I have this network organization, at one point I decided to do a presentation about networking. Because we invite people like you, Chuck, to come and speak about podcasts or this or that or the other thing. But over 13 years, we never had anybody to take stage and talk about networking yet. We are a networking organization. When I realized that, I decided to do a little presentation on networking. And as part of that uh, presentation, I went and looked up the definition of networking in the dictionary. Would you like to know what I found, Chuck? I, I think our entire audience would love to know because I don't think it's as obvious as what people think. You are correct. I found that it was incorrect. Now, I say I'm doing this for 18 years, meaning what? For the last, before the pandemic, up to 16 years, I was going to at least three networking events a week, minimum, sometimes 10. So I've lived it, I've saw it, I, I've experienced it, I run groups. I could tell you with that much experience what will work and what wouldn't. The edge that I have, so I've done it so much, I know it inside back. I made it my life, in fact. And from there, having understood that, I said to myself, if you don't have the correct definition, we couldn't possibly have the correct know-how. Yes, there are books out there, but they are about successful action or opinion. Whether a successful action may work for Bill, it would not work for Jill. Ask anybody the definition of networking. Everybody has their own definition, which is okay. This is supposed to be a free country or a free world. But if everyone has their own way to network, there would be a lot more car accident on the roads. So I made it my mission to codify it. So when we say people do not know how to network, in fact, the reality is they have never been taught how. We assume because people can speak, they can network. But it's not because I can push my foot down that I can drive the car. That's not true. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And you got to know the you got to know the right way to do it. And I know that networking was definitely a weak point uh, in business when I was first getting started, you know, probably 25 years ago when uh, I was first attending events and promoting my first business. And uh, there was nobody there to really guide. Here's what you say. Here's how you connect. Uh, here's how you uh, do a value exchange so that you uh, so that you really want to connect with this person beyond just this networking, but out, you know, out in your business as well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, first of all, not knowing what to say, uh, mm -hmm. sometimes being a little bit shy about, um, you know, things and, and communicating, but also, um, perhaps being too selfish, uh, as well, like being what, you know, and, and I, and I've seen this. I know I've done it. Uh, especially in my early days and others as well, they look at networking and they go, wow, look at all these potential clients. Look at all these, oh, look at all the business I'm going to get from these people, right? Mm -hmm. Look at how much I'm going to be able to sell. And again, that's, you know, how much can I get from me? Mm -hmm. uh, but really, I found that it's more beneficial to, you know, to give, to go there without that, that, um, that expectation and then to um, give. Is, is that what you have found as well? Like with, Most definitely. 
Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, to your point, there's, there's two things that I want to take up. The first one is mindset. First and foremost, the correct mindset is fundamental, which is even before you say a thing, they pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not, really, even before you say a thing, because if you don't have the correct mindset to your point, one of the things that I discovered is the card, what I call the cardinal rules of networking. I find them to be even the prime rule. When royalty was royalty, they have two prime rules. One, the first one is be interested. Okay, that's number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, always put your personal interest last. These are the fundamental information that allow me to put together a workable networking know-how. So first and foremost, the mindset. We say, for example, if you go to a restaurant, there's two categories of people. You have the one who has a napkin over here. He's there to help himself. Okay, that's one guy. And you have the other one which has the thing sitting over here. He's the waitress. He's there to serve. The correct mindset is the one who's there to serve. And that is the correct mindset in networking. Okay, it's not about what is that you're eating, it's what is that you can do for other, for other people. So when you walk into that room, what I teach in my coaching and training, when you walk into that room, you don't have to, don't, don't think about yourself. You think about who is this, what can I do for him? Mm-hmm. That is the core, it makes your relationship easy, the connection easy. And if you add to that, while they're talking to you, think about what you can do for them. You can but succeed. You build a relationship, meaning what? Meaning they are open to meet with you again. So you'll have your chance to talk about what you do. But even more importantly, when you do it right, we know the statistics that every grown-up knows at least 3,000 people. I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. If you are a grown-up, you know at least 3,000 people. So if you do your job well, that person in front of you knows at least 3,000 people. If you do your job well, they may or may not buy your product. That's not really important. The important thing is that now they are willing to take you and introduce you to the people you're looking for. Mm. And that really is so much pow- so much more powerful than just that single uh, connection. And I think that's really, you know, it's really short-sighted to think about, oh, how do I turn this person to a client? And, you know, what, how can they serve me or how can they buy my thing? And I really love what you said about serve. I think serve is such a powerful word because you go to a networking event. And I think a lot of people do think about going to networking events as I'm going to go to a networking event because I need to grow my business. Mm -hmm. And so they're going there for very short term goals Mm -hmm. in mind is I'm going to go there and I'm going to get some contacts. I'm going to turn those into clients Mm -hmm. versus what you're saying. And I love this. And that is, how can I go to this networking event and serve Mm -hmm. the people that are there? That Mm -hmm. is so incredibly powerful. And what are you witnessing? So, you know, what are you witnessing as uh, people are, um, you know, approaching this? And and maybe let's just kind of look at both sides here. Uh, Maybe think of someone who uh, is going there strictly to get something for themselves. Mm -hmm. And the other person who is going there with the mindset of serving, you know, describe the experience. What what what's happening with the person who's looking for themselves, and what's happening with the person who is there to serve? And and let's do the contrast of the res- maybe difference in results that 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 they're seeing. Absolutely, uh, I'll say two things. One of the things we teach it is we call it the sequence to getting business or how you get customers. It goes one networking two promotion and three sales in that order. Mm-hmm. Okay. The survey was done at the Chamber of Commerce event. It was a networking event. And people were asked, who is here to sell something? All the hands went up. Who is here to buy something? All the hands went down. <laughs> <laughs> that Bit of a problem. <laughs> you know, when I tell you what was going on in that room, don't sell me, I sell you. Don't sell me, I sell you. That's <laughs> that right. <was> the conversation. <laughs> how is that going to work? I don't know how is that going to work. Yeah. <laughs> now, if I tell you, if you have been in business for more than 24 hours, you would have heard this word called the elevator speech, which means who you are, what you do, what your company, what have you. And we, if we compare that against the networking promotion and sell, we see that 
the level of speech comes under promotion. Mm-hmm. Since I'm promoting myself to you, I'm telling you what, who I am, what I do. So then it comes down to the, then the bulk of what we call networking, except a few people like you, for example, but most people, the bulk of them, networking for them is sales covertly or overtly or promotion. They never graduated to networking. Networking comes first. The purpose of networking, if you don't forget it, you don't want to remember one single thing, at least remember this, outside of the, the cardinal rules, the purpose of networking is to create acceptance. It is not to sell or promote yourself. I've, I've, in the past, I've, I've, sometimes I do that. I've been to an event where I go and talk to somebody. I have a great conversation with them. I'm interested in what they do. And then before I leave, I get their information. I leave. But if I went and told somebody, I went to a networking event, I met this guy's name is Chuck, we have a great conversation, but I didn't tell him what I, what I, my name or what I do, most people are going to go, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because they think it is about promoting yourself or selling. No, it's about creating acceptance. If I show interest to Chuck and I put my personal interest last, I can call him later and say, hey, Chuck, you remember me? My name is Basil. We met at the chamber. Is there a way you can give me five or ten minutes so I can tell you what I do? If I did my job well, Chuck's going to tell me three words. Those are when and where. At which time now I can promote myself to him. You follow? That comes after. Now, being that I've created acceptance, and then I tell him what I do, Chuck may or may not buy. I won't even pressure him into buying what I'm offering. But I can just say, hey, Chuck, now you know what I do. Can you help me by introducing me to people who may need this? Because I've created acceptance, chances are he's going to happily take me into his tribe. Hmm. That's how the game is played. Moreover, so you can understand the depth of it. When I started the research on it, we found the statistic, when you go out there and meet 10 persons, only one become your customers. So then the science of networking is how you handle the nine, which I just show you how. Mm-hmm. The one, when he's going to see that you have no problem, he don't need to take too much. He can say, Chuck, sign me up. Networking is how you handle the nine. So people go out and hit the nine. They're trying to promote to them or they try to sell to them. Of course, it never works. And that's when networking get a bad name. But because they didn't do it properly. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, that just makes so much sense because, uh, and again, it's that mindset shift. Mm -hmm. People go there looking for the one, but really what we want to do is we want to concentrate on the nine. Mm -hmm. And like you said, okay, as an adult, you probably know around 3,000 people. So, you know, what's, what's nine? times 3,000, first of all, but it's more than that, because then there's the connections you're going to make through that. And they all know 3,000. So, you know, those nine could actually connect you with hundreds of thousands Minimal. of people. Yes, absolutely. And it's not, it's, not, it's not just about sales. Like, for example, here, check is inviting me to a podcast. It can be making your partner, inviting to speak at an event. So there's no rush in trying to sell somebody something. It's a short view. They can do tons of things for you. You get what I'm saying? But first and foremost, you got to be there, show attention, and look at them as a human being, not just some somebody having a 16-digit uh, card on this wallet. You get, and that's where the whole thing is thrown out. And who wants that? None of us want that. Nobody wants to feel like they are an ATM machine. <laughs> exactly. You're going to run away from that very, very quickly. And I think we all know when we're being sold to. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it's... When you've just met somebody and it's only been a few minutes, how could they possibly know enough about you, your service, your product, or your company to possibly make a decision? It's way too soon, right? And so, you know, to that an end, you don't even know if they need it or want it, right? Mm-hmm. And so that's focusing on the one, but with the nine, okay, they may not need what you have, but somebody they know might. And so, investing in that relationship, I think is so powerful. It's one of the reasons why I do this show is because mm-hmm. uh, it's it's a very non-promotional thing. And it's a way for me to get to know more about you and to ask questions. And, you know, one of my, one of my big heroes in networking is Dale Carnegie. 
and uh, how to win friends and influence people. And the, the, the phrase that really stood out to me was be interested, not interesting. Mm-hmm. Right. And I remember so early in my career, I was trying to, you know, with, and you mentioned elevator speeches, that's trying to be interesting. You're trying to create the words that you can say that will magically get people to want to, 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 uh, to connect with you. But really the magic is not in that elevator speech no, or, no, and, and, no. and the words that you say, but it's how curious are you about the other person and yes. asking about them. And, you know, it, it's amazing too the stories that he even told about, you know, how he would go and network and didn't say anything about himself. All he did was ask questions of the other person. And then that person would would walk away and say, wow, that Dale Carnegie, he's the most interesting person I've ever met. Mm-hmm. He didn't say anything about himself. So I love this. That really speaks to the serving you're talking about, mm-hmm. really getting to know that person uh, across across from you and stuff. So, um, so, you know, our audience, I mean, they're, they're always looking for ways to collaborate and to create partnerships. And it's one of the things that we teach here is, is how to connect to network. And if there's a good fit, uh, to, to look at how can we collaborate with this person? How could we do more with this person? Um, how can we help them? do more with what they're trying to do. And that shift for us has just been so powerful. I mean, uh, it's, uh, and I just think about the first 20 years <laughs> of, you know, always trying to sell, always be selling, always be selling. And I remember my sales coach, always be closing and all of that. ABC, just complete ABC. nonsense, right? Known like, as ABC. Always that's right. Be <laughs> always be closing. And, uh, you know, it's, um, but it pushes people away and all yes. you, you can't always be closing. I think close at the right time in the right place with the right person. Mm-hmm. And you don't actually have to close that, that hard because they already know they want uh, to be with you. But I think always be connecting, always be connecting. Right. And I love what you said about serving, always be connecting and serving. Right. And so. Absolutely. No, you're correct. Because one of the things people suffer from a lot in business is rejection, be it trying to collaborate, trying to sell, but with the approach that I, I just suggested, you cannot experience rejection. Even in collaboration is really, it applies. Be interested to the person, you know, Put your personal interest last. How can you help them? That goes first. If you do that, chances are they'll do something for you. Uh, one of the biggest problems in networking in general is follow-up. 97% of the business will tell you openly that they are challenged with follow-up. But follow-up starts at the very first second you meet the person. What mindset do you have? If it's the right mindset or if you if the right mindset that we discussed, they are willing to take to go on a journey with you. But if you're only thinking about yourself, what you're going to get out of it, you call them, they don't pick up the phone, they don't answer you, they don't follow up. That's because of what you did from day zero at that very first contact. So again, the mindset. If it's off, they may not, they're not going to tell you, yeah, yeah, you're off. They're going to go like this mentally. Mm -hmm. They won't tell you. They won't say a word, so you're going to work yourself very hard in business or networking anywhere without getting the result because you didn't have the right approach, the serving approach. I think, you know, so very wise, and I think there's so much to learn, you know, from you. I love how you've taken networking and decided to 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 go deeper in that. And I think it's a it's an area that not a lot of people do, but it's so, so needed. And you know, we can we, I mean, it helps everyone in our community for sure. And we're really uh looking forward to you know sharing this uh and the work that you do with them. And I, I just think this is you know a message that I would like to see much many more business owners learn. And that is because every day on LinkedIn, I get these messages going, Chuck, I saw your profile and I really like what I saw and I would love to connect with you. Would you like to connect? And then sure. that, And then you say yes. And then the very next message, you know, 
Chuck, what do you do? By the way, here's what I do. Do, 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 do. And I've got this course and I've got this program and I would really love to book a call with you to discuss all of this. And I'm like, where was the connection? <laughs> right? There was no connection. Connecting mean I uh, accepted your request and now you can spam my my uh, it, my it, box it, it, with it is too bad. Yeah, it's and it happens bad. all the time. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I know. After the first one, if you ever say a thing next, you have a part. I have. You have a text this long. Like, it, it's <laughs> totally not. It, it turns people off. It is so bad because uh, similarly to network, networking is a pleasure. I tell people, networking is like the the good approach, like going to a party. When you go to a party, you get to enjoy yourself, make the connection. It's no different from networking, mind you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely none. If you don't know what you're doing at network events, get into the same mood you are when you go to a party. Meet people, hey, how are you doing? And you're interested in them, you're talking to them, you're having a good time. That's what networking is. And the, 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 the sad part is sometimes somebody is doing that. You have a conversation with them. They're doing fine. They walk into a networking event, they become somebody else. And now I'm, I'm in networking event. I got to be, no, it is actually you. Just be yourself. Just be yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So powerful and such great advice. Well, um, Basile, I can talk to you all day about this because I, I think that we're really on the same page and I so agree and I love everything that you're saying. And what we're going to do is we're going to give everyone a, a link and we're going to, we're going to uh, let everyone know where they can learn from you. And, and, and obviously they can learn a lot. Um, one of the things before we kind of wrap up the, the show, and I've loved everything that we talked about, um, from the sort of the, the personal growth or business growth side of things. I like to share a little few of resources. And one of the things I like to ask all my guests is uh, if there was one book that you recommend that everyone reads, what would you recommend? Mm, that's a tough one. Um, there is a book I have from J. Paul Gary for all the businesses. Is the title? It was it was not the right title, really. It is how to become rich. It's not the best title because he. I think that is a marketing title that they gave him. But Paul Gary is the person who created Gary Oil that we know. He was a very very savvy business people, and he has very sound principles. So I highly recommend how to become rich. Don't get lost into his about becoming rich, please. But the book is really rich in how to learn the craft, how to do it, and how to treat people. So that's what I would recommend. I love that recommendation. And we're going to add that to our growing list of books that our, our uh, guests and our uh, experts have been sharing. And uh, so I really appreciate that. And uh, so um, before we wrap up, two things. Uh, the first thing is tell everyone uh, where they can find out more about you and what you do. You can find out more about me on my website, which is blnetworking.net. B should I type it? Uh, well, we'll put it in the show notes and we'll email it out mm -hmm. to everybody. Yeah. Uh, and so also there is, there's also a free consultation that I can extend to you. I'll send you the link blnetworking.net slash free session. Great. And we'll put that, we'll put that link there as well. So, uh, definitely recommend to, uh, connect with Basil. Uh, obviously so much that you can learn from him, uh, from this and how to serve. And mm -hmm. I honestly believe serving has been when I shifted that mindset for myself, it, mm -hmm. it not only did it open the floodgates to, you know, a, you know, a larger business, but it, a lot of the worries, the concerns, uh, the, you know, trying, trying different things that didn't work. A lot of those things went away and, you know, sales became such a natural process and not such this process of trying to convince everyone to buy my stuff. And when you, when you shift to that serving mentality versus the selling mentality. Uh, it's, it was a big game changer for me. So I, I love to meet uh, a fellow business person who believes the same things. And uh, I think there's so much more that uh, I could learn from you um, with, with all of this. So I appreciate everything you've shared with our audience today. So if we're going to wrap up this episode with Basile, if, if there was just one piece of advice mm -hmm. that our listeners could take away and take action on, uh, what what would you recommend to them? I would tell them be interested. That's no, it, right? Not not interesting. Be 
interested. I love that. And being interested really is a form of serving. And I love that. So uh, great words to uh, end this on. Thank you so much, Bazile. Uh, we've got uh, the links to every uh, on how to connect with you down below this episode. And uh, so everyone go ahead and click on that. Go check him out. And we will see you on our next episode with another great guest on how to create collaborations and partnerships in your business. Thank you for having me.